So welcome to the Fiber Guild. And the Fiber Guild is really designed for model railroaders who are lighting their scenery, uh, using fiber optics, are looking for different techniques to use, products to use even. And then once a month, um, we have somebody come on who has really done some in-depth work with fiber optics and can talk about um, the advances that they've made in the application of the technology and then provides an opportunity for other modelers to ask questions. And we welcome you to join the Fiber Guild. It's basically open to anybody who's uh, lighting scenery and has questions and thinking about things so that we can actually then um, have a dialogue together. So uh, join us on Dwarven Ent, which is our handle on Facebook, and then just ask to join the Fiber Guild. Thanks so much. See you on the Fiber Guild. <laughs>to our second interview of the Fiber Guild. And this week we have Steve Juranix uh, with us. Well, actually, it's not going to be a live interview with Steve. It's pre-recording. If you want to send a message of a question you have for Steve, uh, please put that up. And what I'll do is I'll attempt to answer it um, after Steve's talked. And then if I can't answer that, I'll ask Steve to answer that for you. So Steve actually, back in October of 2020, put together an article in Model Railroad Hobbyist called Lighting Effects Using Fiber Optic Strands. And it's that building that he lit that really got um, my attention and obviously uh, the attention of Model Railroad Hobbyist as well. So Steve's really going to describe that for us. But um, let me talk a little bit about Steve. There's the model right behind me. And the, um, Steve actually started his modeling career back when he was about 10. He put together a 132 um, World War II tank model. Um, and then when he was 14, he actually entered a competition with a tank diorama and won first place in that from his local uh, model store. So that was pretty, pretty good. So here's a picture of Steve with holding the trophy that he, he won at age 14. But Steve also got involved in model train uh, building. And here's uh, an image of um, what he did back in 1981. Now, I was modeling it about the same, actually, no, about a decade before that. No, two decades before that. But I didn't do nearly the same sort of uh, job that Steve's got going here. But he sort of left that when he was about 16 and then came back to it in his mid-40s. So without much further ado, let's move over and let's talk to Steve and find out how he designed the lighting for that building. So Steve, welcome to, to this uh, live broadcast, although we've pre-recorded right now, but great to have you on the show. It's great to be here, Michael. Thank you for inviting me. Great. Well, Steve, you've done a lot of model railroading. What are you doing right now in terms of model railroading? What, yeah. So I... I I started my model or back into model railroading in uh, 2010 and uh, it came down. Well, I had to disassemble my uh, layout in 2017, I guess it was when uh, we decided to build a new house. Huh. And um, so uh, the old one came down to Skoka central and it's in the early stages. Um, I have a little bit of bench work uh, put up and, uh, yeah, some big plans for the new house. So. Excellent. But I hear, Steve, that you've actually got some images of what you've done in the past. And um, yeah, tell us briefly how we find that. Yeah, if you, uh, uh, Muskoka Steve is my, M-U-S-K-O-K-A, is my handle on YouTube. And I think I have probably uh, 20, 20 videos. Uh, I have about um, uh, one to 2,000 subscribers um, on, uh, on YouTube and a lot of people were following my progress. Um, I have only posted, I guess, one video in the last three years, but I was pretty active, uh, as I was building my last layout. So. Well, thanks. That's great. Great, Steve. I think people will be very interested to take a look at that. Um, so 
let's, without much further ado, let's get into taking a look at this great building that you put together and I say was really nicely shown off in Model Railroad Hobbyist. And um, over to you. Okay, thanks very much. So Steve, um, this building that you lit really is, is fun and, and I'm sure that the uh, crew here would really like to hear you know, how you went about it, what sort of, what made you design that, that model up um, and indeed what made you decide to put some lighting in it? Um, sure, Michael. Um, it, it was back in, I guess, the fall of 2019. Um, I was working or I was doing a bit of promotion for Imagine That Laser Art. Um, Nick is a, uh, Nick Masney is a, a friend of mine and I met uh, Nick a couple of years ago at a train show, and uh, we sort of hit it off. We're both in uh, the automotive industry, or were at the time, and um, I really enjoyed uh, the models that uh, Nick was putting out and, and coming up with. Um, so in 2000, the fall of 2019, he had just designed um, some industrial um, uh, wall structures, which were modular, and um, it was sort of on my, my prompting that he came up with this design. And, and uh, so uh, we were going to the um, train fest in Milwaukee with the uh, NMRA uh, local uh, division. Uh, we go every year um, in the fall and put on a, um, a modeling uh, display or like a booth, a modeler's corner. And uh, so I was going in uh, in November of 2019, and I uh, took some of uh, Nick's uh, wall structures to um, just sort of show at the at the table and, and build while I was while I was there. It's a it's a two day show, and everybody sort of brings kits or, or something to work on at the show and just interact with the public while we're doing that. Um, so I brought some of the ITLA wall structures and. Um, while at the show, um, I attended a clinic put on by uh, yourself, and uh, which was promoting your your optic lighting. And I thought, well, that'd be interesting to try for this uh, this structure that I was building. Um, I didn't know how far or how much uh, lighting. I thought I could actually do a larger um, area with uh, one of your lamplighter one modules, but. Uh, it turned out I had so many so many lights on this this one structure that uh, you'll see it it pretty much filled the the lamp lighter with uh, all the all the fibers for this uh, one structure. That's great, Steve. So let's take a look at the buildings. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is the overall structure. Um, I believe there's I think I counted nineteen uh, wall section kits uh, that ITLA puts out. Um, they're all different uh, modules. They're they're all about four panels high, um, but you can um, you can cut them. You can add on to them. I I, I cut out some uh, additional um, structures, just one one panel high to add on um, to this make this little addition on the top. Um, the wall sections are all like this section here was be be one one kit from ITLA. Mm. Um, so he has some with a, that come with the, the roll up door at the bottom. Um, this is a separate kit, the, the little entryway, um, the fire escape, that's a separate kit that you can add on. Um, so there's, there's 19 wall sections in total and they go together. They're all, they're all uh, sort of slotted so that you can put them together in uh, any, if, configuration that you can imagine. So if you have, um, you know, a small 12 inch section to fill, then, you know, you might just do three, three panels. Um, but uh, I like big industrial structures. Um, I've built them, I built them out of plastic, I've built them out of uh, hydrocal kits. Um, but this one, uh, I, I, I think is my favorite, which is the um, it's all MDF or wood, laser cut wood. Um, I find it the easiest for finishing and um, it takes the paint very well. And the, the precision of the, the laser cutting is, is one of the things that I like the best is that 
all of the the windows the windows are a separate piece um the the brick is a separate piece um and he also includes in the kit these uh flat pieces that allow you to cover up all the seams mm -hmm. and put a uh, cornice at the top um you can paint them all separately and you know just with a spray can um and then there's no masking involved and then you can put them all together uh, very easily with just white glue and the laser cutting is so precise everything fits together perfectly very little filing is required you don't have the 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 nubs of the sprues and everything that you have to file off that you that you get with plastic kits and the the precision is just so nice um, even all these little window panes are all uh, laser cut out and they come with uh, some of the little sections of the windows are still still in place. It's easy to knock those out, paint them separately, and then um, as you put in the glazing, you just put the the little sections of window back in, and and it makes it look like a you know it's been broken and then repaired afterwards. Um, it is they're just so versatile and and simple to work with. They the really are really are a, a great kit. That's great, Steve. Do you have uh, some more shots of that? Sure, sure. So that's the overall kit. This is um, from the from the side. Now this structure, I took these photos uh, using Helicon Focus. Um, so this is actually a series of about um, probably eight pictures with uh, various focal lengths. Wow. And uh, so that that and then I stack the photos with Helicon Focus to get, you know, even the back of the structure in focus and even the close up. I was wondering how you'd done that. That's incredible. Good job, Steve. And uh, we just we just hung a sheet. My son and I. My my son's uh, a bit of a amateur photographer. He has some really pretty nice equipment, and uh, we just hung a sheet and and did a little uh, photo shoot with the uh, structure when when it was completed. Um, I, I built the the little diorama in front uh, with some track and and uh, use asphalt for for asphalt i use um just grout mix uh sandless grout mix and um you it comes in you know all kinds of colors uh you can get at home depot lowe's whatever and uh yeah just mix it with uh water and, and a bit of glue i mix in with it and um it you know spoons out just like asphalt and you can spread it around and uh it gives you a very realistic effect um, and then this, uh, asphalt, I had some, some glue and weathering and so forth, just to make it look, uh, much more weathered. So, and this is the first, uh, shot of the building at, uh, in the dark or at night, um, showing the, showing it in all its glory of, uh, your fiber optic lighting. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, a it's a very nice even effect that you get with the uh fiber optics and um uh, so the the smaller lights basically have the fibers all i did was uh drill a hole in the wall uh just large enough to fit the fiber and stuck the fiber through the through the hole in the wall and capped the end of it um on the wall and you get a very very realistic uh, effect of, of the light. Um, and I'll, I'll show in a little more detail how I did the, the sign. Advantech Packaging is my, my personal company, that uh, uh, my corporation. And, and this is my um, imaginary uh, production plant, um, per se, where, where we make packaging. That, that was the um inspiration behind the the name so we uh we lit the dock up inside and um yeah i'll, I'll talk a little more about the the fibers and how i lit the uh the walkways and so forth great steve good let's um take a look at that a bit yeah this is the the lamp lighter one that uh i purchased from from your company and what is uh i used as the basis uh, you'll see it in the back of the model a little bit more and here it is in the um 
uh, how I've mounted it. Basically, it's, it's kind of just hanging there. It's not really, you know, mounted per se uh, in, in the back of the, of the structure. Um, but there's some, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of good information and techniques uh, evident in this, in this picture here. I've used uh, just some foam here as kind of a, a concrete separator between the floors uh, to kind of block the light a little bit. And you can see all the strands. Now, I've grouped them together. Um, I've used electrical tape to group them together. Um, in some areas, I've used um, shrink tubing, um, just some black shrink tubing. It doesn't have to actually be shrunk down. I just, uh, it's a nice, you know, black round <laughs> tube that you can, you know, feed or, you know, run all the, uh, the fibers in, the optic fibers, and uh, gather them all together. And uh, so I, I have some running up along the top and uh, some are along the middle to go to the other part of the structure. Um, the other thing that uh, I was not aware of uh, when, I, when I started this project was how much the fibers glow or give off light. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, if I were doing another structure, I think what I would do is uh, paint, uh, maybe paint all the fibers first. Just just hang them and, and give them a, a black uh, spray of, of spray paint. Um, and then just scratch or mask off uh, some of the fibers where I wanted them to glow um, or create some interior lighting uh, per se. So, Steve, you um, actually raise a very important question in my mind, which is, um, as you look at that, often you light things with the end of the fiber where you really want to sort of uh, illuminate something, but obviously you can also s sort of strip or nick the fiber. What was the method that you mainly used or did you use a mixture of methods here? Oh yeah, yeah, there's definitely a mixture of mes methods used. Um, in this case, I didn't have to do any of the nicking, but I just left the fibers exposed like this big bundle up here running along the top and some of the fibers exposed along this floor area and that cast enough of a glow you know to light up the whole top part of the structure mm. you know, if i wanted it um and i made sure to move the fibers out of you know so they're not running right behind the windows right because it's 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 very evident you'll see in some of the other pictures um, you can see the glow of the fiber, the actual fiber, you know, through the windows. So you don't want them. If you have a very shallow structure, you you have to make sure that you move the fibers away from the windows, but they still cast a good enough glow that you don't need, you know, to put individual ends of, of fibers all along there. Um, if you if you nick the fiber it creates a more pinpoint um source source of light which you know may be may be beneficial or maybe that's what, what you want to create I'll, I'll show an application later where i where i do the nicking of the, of the light one other note is with the itla structures the the wood itself is about um i think one eighth of an inch thick um but it doesn't you don't have to paint the back of the structure like a lot of plastic structures oh, right. you have to paint black inside so that the light does not pass through it doesn't give you a glow of the, of the wall on the outside um the with the itla structures the wood it does not leak the light does not leak through any of the seams or the wall itself so that's that's another benefit of the of the IITLA. So and here's another close up of the of the lamp lighter itself and you can see some more bracing that I've done inside the the model. And uh how all the fibers I, I pretty much maxed out the the lamp lighter. They are in there in that uh the port quite uh, tight. Okay. And here it is uh the back uh, all lit up and you can see how your how the um the fibers glow you know where they're left exposed and um how this is areas where they're covered up so
See, that's really interesting because every building I've done, I've just used a um, single fiber sticking up. So actually having something where you're using the side glow of the fiber, I think is particularly interesting. I'm going to have to try that technique on my own layout, Steve. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're eliminating, you know, you probably need, you know, three or four, you know, small LEDs on the back of this wall in order to get uh, a similar effect where you, you're, you're getting it all, the whole floor sort of lit up, right. you know, just from, just from running the one fiber. And then over in the dock area, I have the end of a fiber. You can see the quite bright glow here. Um, and that is the end of a fiber, just kind of over top of the whole room, lighting up the room there. Uh, making the overhead door lights. Okay, so on the loading docks, uh, this is a very good close-up of these industrial lights. I, I search forever to try and find, you know, just a basic wall industrial light. You, you see the gooseneck lights all over the place, right? But uh, my era is uh, more of the sort of mid-80s, 1980s. Um, and GP9s, SD40s, uh, those are my my favorites. And um, so I wanted, a, I didn't want the gooseneck lights. I wanted a more industrial looking, you know, wall sconce. And I did these ones just with some uh, styrene sort of uh, U-channel. And then I just cut a small piece off and capped the end of it and just stuck that on the wall and have a, uh, a hole in the wall with the fiber, just the end of the fiber just sticking out of the bottom of that light. Now, since then, I've gotten uh, some 3D printed, which are about uh, three millimeters by two millimeters high. Um, my friend Bernard over at Mini Prints, uh, he printed them up for me. And um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been able to try them out yet, but uh, <laughs> the, I will be using those in my next application. Those are going to be pretty tiny, two by three millimeters. That's that's great. Yeah, stuff. Ah. Uh, I mean, your the the fibers, you know, probably you know, 0.75 millimeters or something. So uh, they don't need to be very big. Um, you know, the industrial lights that you see nowadays are probably what 18 inches, 24 inches max. Um, you know, in real life, on the on the side of a, a factory. So and they they cast. Uh, you know, a lot of light, so, and and here they are lit up. You can see I managed to make sure that there was no light leakage over top of the, the canopies and um, they uh, cast a nice nice glow. You can see it, it lights up the whole area below the light quite well. So Steve, quick question on that, then is the fiber being bent downwards on that or is it just reflecting off the in plastic internal surface? Of the uh, what I did, I, when I drilled the hole, I drilled it on a, you know, probably a 45 degree angle through the wall. Right. So that's holding the fiber just pretty much at that sort of angle coming out of the wall. So That's an excellent glow. Yeah, I like that. Nice, nice work. And uh, this is this is one of my favorite shots here. I got a little too much. It, it's it, it almost looks like it's it's wet. <laughs> The ground. I have a little too much gloss on the uh, on the, on the on the tarmac there, but uh, um, I'll, I can tow that down with some powders or something once I get it, the model installed on the layout. So, oh, I'd leave it like that. It looked beautiful. I thought it was a nice, wet sort of you know wintry type of scene. You know, sort of a little grungy and uh, oh no, great, yeah. great effect, Steve. I like it. There's another shot from the from the side of the building. Now, uh, some of these canopies. Um, over top of the doorways, I took, uh, uh, you can buy the little round uh, metal, I don't know if they're aluminum or brass, uh, you know, canopies for like a gooseneck light or something. You can just buy the disc portion with the hole in the middle. Um, I took some of those and just kind of deformed them, flattened them on the one side and stuck those to the wall and basically put the... Huh. Uh, put the fiber through the middle of those and uh, just painted the, the back of the fiber black and uh, left them sticking through the canopy. And that was, that was good enough. Now in this picture too, you can see, you can see the faintly, the, the fiber 
through the window, you know, if you were, you know, sort of examining this uh, <laughs> to the nth degree, you would you would notice the the fibers back there. Uh, the lit sign. This was a interesting experiment that I tried. So we're talking about the the sign over here, my Advantech packaging sign. So I was trying to get the effect of you know, many incandescent little light bulbs behind the behind the light. And this was um, one instance where I used the nicking of the, the fibers in order to achieve that effect. Well, that, that was one of the features, Steve, that really got my attention because I was wondering how, how you'd done that. I haven't actually been able to re reproduce that. I haven't tried yet, but I thought I would wait until you go through this detailed discussion before I go and try it. So tell sure. us really the detail would be fascinating, I think. So I just had a piece of uh, clear styrene um, maybe I wouldn't, it wasn't one eighth thick. It was probably maybe a 16th thick, uh, just clear, clear piece of Lexan or styrene, whatever you like. Um, and I crazy glued the, the fibers to the back of the styrene and, um, yeah, here it is here. So I just took that clear piece, uh, glued the fibers onto the back. And the, the sign itself is just white printer paper uh, that I put in my laser jet printer and uh, just stuck that with white glue right onto the, the front of the styrene. So no, no, no fancy decals <laughs> or anything like that. It's just printer paper. And uh, the fibers put on the back. Um, now I, and then I nicked them, uh, nicked all the fibers um, very close together, probably one millimeter apart, maybe two millimeters at the most, uh, just to create that, that effect. Like it was many multiple small lights. I'm going to say, so that really added to the effect. If you just left them without the nicking, you'd have still got some glow, but. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have been a br as bright. Okay. Um, the, the nicking created a yeah, more individual points of light instead of that overall glow, which is not what uh, what I was going for. Okay. I don't think it would have been bright enough. And then th this is just one wall section or where the window could go on the ITLA structure. I just put a backing on it and then fed all the fibers through. And my sign, of course, was, was sized to fit in, in this opening. And then that was the final effect. Now I, I painted, I painted the edges all black, and I, I made the mistake painting the the back of the sign black as well. And that um, I I don't think that was it. It killed the light too much. Ah. I think I, I I should have I should have sandwiched another piece of plastic or something on the back, maybe white plastic. Um, to sort of contain and reflect the light a little better than, than painting it black. Could you, so. could you in fact, have used some um, aluminum foil on the back to just create a good reflection? Yeah, yeah even that uh, probably would have done a better job of, of uh, creating the, the glow and, and containing the light a little better. Mm, okay. Like I said, it was, it was, it was all an experiment. and uh, <laughs> yeah. It came out very well, I would say. Just go back to that one with the where you see the light itself. The um, yeah, there it is. That's it. Just has a, a just a very gentle glow to it. It's it's not sort of popping out at you, but it's um, and it, and you're right. It looks like some fluorescent tubes right behind the yeah yeah. yeah. That's neat. It was close up. Yeah. yeah if. I would have liked to have gotten the ink a little darker on the on the sign, but um, I couldn't seem to get the saturation any better on my printer, because that that would have looked a lot better. Maybe if I had a a decal or something that I could have put over top of it and made it more defined, that would have been better. So, so Steve, this actually is just plain lightweight paper, white paper that you've used. Correct printed onto it and you've got yeah. enough light shining, shining right through it. That's amazing. That's good. Yeah. That's great. 
and see overall structure again. So, Steve, thanks so much for showing us uh, that building. It's it's really quite a lot of detail. Beautiful uh, execution on that, and obviously you had the right sort of tools at hand to do that. Um, so, Steve, what's what are you working on next? Well, uh, expanding the layout. Uh, I have you know, the bench work for phase one uh, almost completed, and um, I'm still working on the basement, finishing uh, phase three of the basement so that um, we can get further along with bench work. Sounds great. Well, I better let you get back to it. Thanks again, Steve. Have a good rest of your time. Bye for now. Thanks, Michael. See you again. See you again. Well, you've just uh, seen um, Steve and talking about uh, what he's done and especially that lighting of the, um, of the sign. And so I'd actually just op like to open this up to questions that people have. And so you can just type them in and, um, and that would be just great if you would. So actually, one of the things that stimulated me, you know, creating the, the, um, the lighting piece and I, I just decided that I would have a little bit of fun. So while, you, while I'm waiting for some questions, I just want to show you a couple of things. So a sign that I just put together. So of course it's got our logo on it and um, I don't do as good camera work as Steve does, um, but there it is. So I just created a little box and um, put some uh, fibers into it. Uh, actually I used, um, a rotor tool to actually abrade the fibers so that they let some light out from the fibers. Uh, and there's just six fibers sitting in there. There's just a, a background shot of it. Um, so then I did an inverted where I just inverted the image that I used uh, just so I could get a different um, you know, feeling to that sign. Anyway, that, that's kind of fun. Let me go to some of the questions that are coming up. Um, the question is, the crazy glue won't harden the fiber? Well, it actually does harm the fiber um, typically if you've got, um, if, if you put crazy glue on that's uh, very low viscosity, you'll see it actually wick all the way along the fiber and it will glow from the side of the fiber. And ultimately, some of the crazy glues that I've come across will actually damage it to the point that it just breaks fairly easily. Um, I actually do use a crazy glue made by a guy called Dr. Mike's. Um, it doesn't have some of the additives that you'd find in the Home Depot or Lowe's uh, crazy glue material. And I think it's quite a bit more gentle with the fiber, but nevertheless, uh, in fact, he has, well, he has a high viscosity one. That's much easier to use. So here's another one. Let me pull this one up. So Michael, I was curious on the light boxes you've got, any chance you'll make one that has a dimmer function included? Well, it's funny you should ask that because what I did was recently I came out with an RF controller and the RF controller has a beautiful dimming function. All you do is you just take the wall wart plug and you come into the um, this basically an RF uh, receiver. It just plugs straight on one side. The other side plugs straight into the lamp lighter and it has a dimming function um, that is continuous. You can also change whether it's going to blink and flash and you can create an emergency scene with it, you know, rapid flashing, that sort of thing. Obviously all the fibers flash at once because it's controlling the whole box, but that's certainly uh, one way that you can do that. So great question. Uh, you mentioned you spray painted some of the fibers, taped some and used shrink tubing. All good ideas for covering the glow of the fiber where you want unwanted, where you don't want unwanted light. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's more of a comment. Um, it's certainly a great idea. Uh, I found I can use the heat shrink tubing, something like a one millimeter diameter. It will actually even, uh, you can put a 1.5 down it and it just slides straight down that tube. You don't need a heat shrink it at all. It's just, and it's very cheap stuff to be able to put on. So it's a great, great thing to use. Well, I'd like to thank, thank um, Steve for doing this presentation with me. Um, it stimulated me with a lot of thinking. I'm actually looking at now some uh, industrial lights uh, for the doors, such as what Steve has created. I've just created a light box. So obviously, it's, it's stimulating me to, to do some work as well. Um, oh, here is a question. Um, here we go. How much can bend the fiber before you have issues with the light? Okay, great question. Um, there's a very simple answer to that. And typically, 
it's about five times the diameter of the fiber for the bend, the radius of that bend. But the easiest way to do it, and by the way, I use boiling water, very simple. And if you create a, just put two aluminum tubes onto the fiber, so basically it's straight, put it into boiling water, bend it, and then as you bend it, you're gonna find that um, the bend will, can be nice, fairly gentle. Um, and then what I do is I just put some light through it and see if I've bent it too far. Um, that way you can easily see whether you've bent too much. You'll always get some loss, um, but when it starts to glow out of, the, out of that bend, you've gone way too far with it. So great question on that. For, I just put this down here today because uh, some of you won't obviously be watching it on the Fiber Guild. Um, it'll be on our YouTube channel. So we'll actually then, uh, you can get to it through Dwarvenent and um, asking to join the Fiber Guild. But thanks so much for watching. I look forward to emails you send and so will Steve too. But congratulations, Steve, on a great job um, with this building. It really is spectacular as far as I'm concerned. I've, I don't think I could reproduce a building like this on my own layout. So thanks a lot. And uh, okay, and that's all from now. Um, See you in another month's time. Blessings. Bye for now.